Hello, I was asked by one of my subscribers, Miracob, to make a video about myself. And asking me to talk on camera is always very risky. You, you run a significant risk of me talking for a long time. And yeah, at, at first I thought, you know, oh, I guess I can throw something there just briefly. Then I got to thinking, I haven't really done a video that just, or at least not any time recently, that's just about me. And I started to think of a lot of things that I might want to talk about in such a video. So yeah, here we go. And as I even before I get into that, I don't know right now if this video is going to turn out to be long, but it might. And in case it does, or even if it doesn't, I should address why my videos end up long. A there's a lot of people think that I am arrogant that I, you know, just, you know, enjoy the sound of my voice too much. I think it's not impossible that there might be some of that, but I think mostly I am a nerd, big time nerd, and I get really, really into stuff that, you know, movies, games, you know, these kinds of things, and when that happens, I want to talk about it, and yeah, I basically see these as kind of just, I don't know, essays, I guess, like, you know, and I want to make clear, I don't expect other people to just sit down and watch a full long video of mine. I make them as a sort of a collection of you know fact statements fact statements and like you know analysis of and and such and such and you know I I put the the time code down below in order to specifically say, you know, if you're just looking for specific, you know, if you just want to know what are the, what's the three D like on this current, you know, on this current movie, it, you know, I'll try to put that in the time codes. That's it, you know. And in in fact, if you are going to, you know, watch a lot of them, as I put in the description box. If you at all want to see clips of what I'm reviewing, you know, go ahead and open that in another tab. You're probably not going to miss a lot of, like, me, you know, gesticulating with my hands, if that's the term, or, or such. You know, I, my videos are not that visual. And, and also you can just listen to it you know while you're doing other things that's that's the way i listen to i guess mo me it's mostly podcasts but yeah you know while you're doing other things yeah and also i i don't put there there are a couple of different reasons why i don't put any material from the you know, the subject of the video in the video. Part of it is just editing. You know, I, I'm a workaholic. And as I already mentioned, you know, and I really get into stuff. If I sit down and start editing, I'm gonna, excuse me, I'm gonna just do that for way too long. And I also, I am really anxious about stuff like copyright infringement and such so that too and I personally I mean sometimes when I watch something and people have you know edited in clips I do watch that but 
a lot of the time I find that distracting. I I start watching and forget to listen. And maybe that's just me, but that's and ultimately and this is where it's it might get to sound arrogant or you know pat myself on the back e I make the videos that I want to see. I think that's you know that's how they, they say you should do you know if you're as they say if, well, making movies but yeah when you're producing something produce something that you would want to see yourself and that's kind of it I want really long videos that go into every single minute detail you know think of it as like a almost a video walkthrough kind of thing only you know it not every game do I actually go that in depth that that's for you know games I've played a million times or the like yeah now yeah I suppose that so getting into the actual yeah, getting getting into it. Mirkov asked me to say my name. My name is Andreas, A N D R E A S. And don't worry if you can't pronounce it as as I do. <laughs> I don't think a lot outside of like, you know, Scandinavia really can you know. And boy, that sounds elitist. Yeah, if you know. You can also just call me Andrew. I, I believe my parents chose my name. I, I think they said that. It's been a while since I asked them, but I think they chose my first name because, in part, it is a... Because, see, my, my parents were also, you know, got way too much into it. Or, yeah, my... Yeah, anyway yeah would would get way too into things and yeah but part of the reason they chose the name is that there are versions of it in a lot of languages so in english it would be andrew in french it would be andre and such and such which is hilariously ironic because i hate travel and i you know i barely speak yeah i don't speak any other languages than english and danish you know i can i can pick up words here and there but that's it. Now, yeah, so, yeah, with, with that said, I am and greatly enjoy the flavor of Danish. I, you know, Mirakov asked me to talk about what, you know, likes and dislikes. So, you know, as far as movies, I, I really love like horror, thriller, drama, and especially the psychological ones. The, the ones that really, you know, go into our nature and the, yeah, I, I find that when it, yeah, when it really explores our deep, deep, dark, you know, yeah, the, the, those areas is what I find most compelling. Now, one of my one of the movies I really love that I would do in this series if I was if I hadn't already reviewed it is Monster. I absolutely love just so compelling of a movie. You know, one of, some of my favorite directors are John Carpenter, mostly the '80s stuff, and Christopher Nolan. I do also like comedies, but it's. I find I don't like a lot of today's comedies, but I I really like some some of the ones from like the 90s, which you know that was when I was a kid. So, but uh, in other ways, I'm really not at all 90s. Like the 90s were also you know, Linkar's 90s kid says well you know extreme you know, rock and you know really you know dark kind of stuff and such. It didn't. You know, that, that didn't do a lot for me, at least not back then. Now, I prefer the action of John Woo movies and Wachowski, the Wachowskis and Arnold as in the 1980s to more recent kind of where, you know, yeah, the, the stuff that's like taken and such. I prefer the, the grand action. And I... 
I greatly prefer Born to Bond. I don't think I ever really care that much about Bond. And that leads very directly into the next thing. While I'm not an anarchist or a libertarian, I do find that authority, I find, should really be held accountable because I've seen a lot of abuse of power in my life, even when I was a kid, and I hate it. Like, it's, it's funny that I should be recording this right after, you know, the, the pianista, which also very much has to do with, you know, relationship, you know, power relationship, power dynamics and relationships, and this kind of thing. It's, you know, it's just because he, he asked, like, Monday, I think, and when, when I start recording, I want to keep recording. You know, it's, it's basically that. But, but yeah, so, so it's, not, it's not specifically because of that that I'm going into this. But, but, yeah, in the situations where I've been in some power over others, you know, yeah, various relationships, I've tried very hard to make sure that the others could, could really say when and could really, you know, present their input. And I would genuinely consider, or at least, not always, I was a teenager once, yeah, try to really consider it, try to make, make room for others. Yeah, I, I very much think that it's, it's, to me, Bond, I'm not a fan of the state. I'm, I don't, I don't believe that the intelligence department of Western powers, be it England or America, deserves all the respect and credit that it gets. It needs more accountability because what we see when we don't have accountability is people spying on their exes and finding sex tapes and crap like that and yeah that's what happens when you just have these completely you know yeah these these powers and and you know when even when i was a kid i was also taught about you know historical abuses of power so my, my father's a major history buff so yeah now I used to read a lot of comic books I I think I kind of stopped because let's see there were there were two that I had like subscriptions for I'm not really the type to go out and look at things and buy them individually. I'm, I'm a subscription kind of guy. And yeah, I, I had subscription to this one Danish one that kind of collected some of the most compelling American stories. And I think they just stopped sending that one. Or was it that I didn't like the direction? I don't remember exactly. And then I was subscribed to, of course, Spider-Man. And I think it was right around, I don't remember specifically one more day, but it was around that time. Yeah, that's, and, and I really haven't consistently read comic books since then. I've read a few in, you know, to, to do reviews on them. And I certainly, I read Watchmen long before the movie came out. When the movie trailer came out, I was like, I, you know, wow, they got a lot of stuff from that. You know, I was like, oh, that's from this part of the story. That's from this part of the story. Wait, did, does that mean that they changed this part? Because that looks, you know, yeah. And yeah, I, I have read, I've probably read half men, half the Watchmen at least half a dozen times. You know, I really read 300 that one time for the video review of the movie. I've read V for Vendetta a bunch of times. I do prefer Watchmen, but... I, and The Killing Joke, are you kidding me? I love Alan Moore. Just the, the man... I wouldn't say he can do no wrong, because there are some of the stuff that I would... You know, 
completely in love, but I pretty much read everything of his that I could get my hands on, except I still gotta read the, the one from hell. I, yeah. But, yeah, I haven't read comics mostly in a while, but I am really loving that we're getting so, much, so many adaptations. Now, obviously, it's this, you know, Hollywood just keeps churning out stuff until it eventually does poorly, so obviously, you know, adaptation overload, but I really love that we're getting compelling depictions of some of my favorite, you know, I... I used to love Iron Man and I'll never stop loving Spider-Man you know and I really love what they did with the third Iron Man which is also something that they did really well in some of the comics some of the best comic stories with him is when he is powerless there's this one story where I think like the suit rejects him and leaves him on like a deserted island or something it's been ages since I read it and he has to make do whilst the suit is out there and yeah it's just that these are the best stories that you know now when it comes to video games stealth are you know tend to be my my favorite genre and well, one of my favorite and you know even though it's fairly recently that I started playing Thief Thief is you know one of my favorite Thief might be my favorite franchise because there are two two amazing games in there but but yeah it's it's of course Hitman is also very much up there but I do really only the only two Hitman games that I love are the first and the fourth. So, yeah, that leaves, what, four, two, three, two, three, and five, I guess. Yeah. That leaves three that are, eh, yeah, for various reasons. But then, you know, of course, Commandos really wish that that you know hadn't died off but yeah oh and I, as for Thief I haven't played the newest one yet in part because I don't think my current system is good enough I will upgrade at some point I'm not I'm not really a tech buff at all but yeah I probably will play it eventually just to see because I am just you know, complete what's the, uh, masochist, I think. Yeah, sadist is towards other people. Yeah. Now, I do also really greatly appreciate Splinter Cell, I find to be duplicate, which, which is, of course, ironic considering what I just said about Bond. With Splinter Cell, I kind of mentally remove that. I especially had to do that for. For, for Blacklist, which, yeah, where, where, you know, drones and there's no irony to these bad guys that, yeah, but, but yeah, with Splinter Cell, there are good Bond movies. I probably, I've watched, I think, all of them up to and including GoldenEye, but I think it's also just not really my kind of I'm not really into spy gadgets, which again is ironic for Splinter Cell. Not in movies, at least, for, for gadgets, which again, you know, part of why I love Bourne. Now, I do, you know, and then, you know, there's of course, Assassin's Creed, which I still say just there are way too few consequences in that franchise to, you know, but they had cool ideas, and with the first one, they actually really had nice, pure product there. And then immediately in the second one, you know, in the first one, you can't assassinate someone if if they've seen you. Just impossible. You cannot fence with the the you know wrist blade, and that makes a lot of sense to me. And you only have the one wrist blade. I don't think knives can really kill. I think they can like. Slow down, or, or it, it's all, knives is also only if you haven't been seen will they do much. Yeah, 
I and then immediately in the second one, oh, two blades and you can fence with them and all this stuff. Yeah, and I really loved how in the first one you could listen in on conversations and intercept letters, and that would help you for the mission because in the letter it has some details, in the conversation there are some other details. Gradually you find out how what is actually going to go down, how am I going to be able to really affect it. That makes a ton of sense, but yeah. Now, another genre I really love is action adventure. Prince of Persia. I grew up on the first game and you know it was years before I got to play the second and the third but I've played I believe every single one I haven't paid a lot of attention like I th yeah I think Ubisoft just stopped because hey we we're making Assassin's Creed and that's nice and easy and a lot of people like it so yeah but yeah all the Prince of Persia games I've video reviewed <laughs> all of the Prince of Persia I, I just yeah the you know, just one of, one of the very first games I ever played, and it was just so impressive. After I played that, I was like, why am I supposed to care about these games? Because the health doesn't make as much sense as it does in Prince of Persia. The, you know, I became a snob. I became a, just, I was pretty insufferable as a kid, and at least some of my teenage years. I'm, I'm, you know, that is, that is, completely I do not deny that for a second I would hope I'm better today another game I grew up on was Commander Keen and it was especially the fourth one Invasion of the Vorticons in Goodbye Galaxy I think is the yeah I played again I've, I played all the Keen games just again just love this I, I love that it's one hit kills all the way Make one mistake, that's it. You can save any time though, but if you make one mistake, you're dead. You have to start the level over if you didn't save. I love that. I I look for that in games today, which is another thing where you know, in Prince of Persia, also you know, you have to make more than one mistake in a when when you're fencing. But you know, the 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 big guy in like level level seven. I want to say it's level seven where you find that that guy is intense. And yeah, you you have you 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 cannot lower your guard, or you'll be just decimated. Yeah, love that. Music, Tomler, Weird Al, to mention Bo Burnham, love these kind of parody comedy songs. You know, Tomler was doing comedic songs about the Cold War during the Cold War. That is awesome. That is badass. He, you know, and he really released a lot of tension that way. It just, I love So Long Mom, a song for World War III. I love Werner von Braun and the Who's Next. Love that. Just, we will all go together when we go. One of my all time favorite songs. Love it. Just, yeah, cannot get enough. Of Tom Lehrer and and he was early in really challenging a lot of these norms and I find it fun today to look at his songs and kind of think you know what which of these songs really hold up some of the sexual perversion songs really hold up they're they're just as offensive today as they were back then which means we haven't really you know overall there has been a lot, you know, the the sexual awakening and you know, sexual revolution. Overall, a lot has changed, but there's still a lot of repression, and there's still, you know, which which may also say that he pushed it really far, you know. Meanwhile, you know, what is it just called a Christmas card? I don't remember exactly, but his song about Christmas, completely out of date. You know, he was he was like poking at it. Don't you realize how consumer, you know, it's it's so consumerist, consumer? It, yeah, you, I think you know the word, you know. Meanwhile, today it's so much worse. You know, his, his song doesn't begin to cover how, you know, yeah, how much it, it 
has yeah so so yeah and and weird al are you kidding me long entire songs just about his love of food you know and, and like 10 or 11 minute long song purely about his experience of going to the drive through don't even just love it and and he has one of my all time favorite lyrics in close but no cigar the very first verse and and just you know after that I'm like okay the, these other ones are great too but you you you're not topping that one he he describes how she's just he's you know she's perfect in every way except she would always she was always using the word infer when she obviously meant imply and here it comes I know some guys would put up with that kind of thing wait for it but frankly I can't imagine why that is that is comedy gold right there it's it's not even like it's it's this tiny little thing that is oh, well, that's not a big deal you know, infer and imply aren't they basically synonyms and and he's like you know and and okay so it's you know he's not taking that you know not only does that bother him he's like some guys would put up that I can't imagine why this is just people have gone to war over less you know just love it love that guy and you know Bo Burnham watch what watch it and I, I love his you know the, the the music video for repeat stuff just goes so far goes just right from the opening to, to the end just every every little beat every decision made just you know one of my favorite things is the the I you know granny I crap I don't remember exactly how that goes but when you know the eyes and switching out the girls just yeah, and of course the ending, you know, the, the, yeah. Now, and then, you know, obviously, Eminem. You know, it's, it's, it's in my username. And just, yeah, own everything he's put out. You know, a lot of, a lot of musicians, I just get the single, because it's like, the rest of the album's not going to be as good. Or I get, you know, or I may get the album if there's, you know, some... With Eminem, just no, or or I might just borrow it from a friend here. For, you know, eh, don't need to listen to that. Most, most of the music I've listened to, I've eventually, you know, abandoned. Not so with Eminem. Just yeah, I I first heard the what's it called, the Marshall Mathers LP, and it was around the time it had just gotten out. You know, I you know. I was driving. A, or I wasn't driving. I was a passenger in a car, and I saw that the driver. She had this Eminem CD, and I was like, "I've heard that name. They they talk about him on the news, or it might have been MTV, but there was something about he makes these really offensive lyrics. He bothers a lot of people, and I'm like, so what you're telling me is a lot of authority figures hate this guy, and it just you know, I asked." Could we listen to that? Oh, sure. We listen to the first couple of tracks. I loved this guy before the end of the public service announcement. Not kidding. And I, you know, went out and bought it just you know, a few days after. Listened to it on and on and on. And just, yeah. Same thing with, you know, Marshall Mathers LP2. Not long after it came out, bought it. Just, yeah. You know, the, the, Legacy is one of my all-time favorite raps. Survival, don't even get me started. Yeah, just yeah, but but yeah, basically, you know, rap music and or just it's it's all about the lyrics for me. You know, it's it's the verbal, just yeah, I'm all about words, verbal, linguistic kind of, you know, yeah, and the yeah. Now, now, I, you know, 
I can't really help analyze, it, which is another, you know, also part of why these videos end up so long. Just, yeah, I, I want to say everything that I've, you know, noticed or thought about or that I find is worth pointing out in it, you know, that just, yeah, it, it's, it's, in person, when people want me to stop talking, it can be kind of awkward for both people. And that does happen. When it's a video, I invite, turn off the video as soon as you don't want to hear another word or don't even watch it if you see the length and think it's through. Be my guest. I, and I'm not even being sarcastic here. Just, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's exactly the idea here. Now, I, as far as food, Italian and Chinese are really, Chinese was more, more recently, it, Italian, yeah, that, that just, yeah, I've, I've loved that since forever. Now, I, it's been a while since I've done a satire and or argument video. I. I feel like I've said most of what, like, there are variations, like, you can only say so many times that this powerful figure is doing something he wants to and then, you know, decrying others for doing the same or for doing something that, you know, that he sees as worse, but she shouldn't, you know, yeah, before it, it kind of, yeah, you've said it all. And I feel like others are saying what I might be saying otherwise, you know. Now, I, I am a hugely liberal, you know, yeah, liberal as they come pretty much. I'm a sex positive feminist and, you know, humanist, atheist, and not afraid to say I'm an atheist, but more secularist. It doesn't bother me. Religion doesn't bother me if it's not hurting anyone. If if it's if everyone is a willing participant and they're not trying to force into law something that isn't religion shouldn't get to be an argument in and of itself. It shouldn't be we believe that this is important, the fact that, you know, so we don't need to do studies on it, and or we will ignore or go against studies. That's where I take issue with it. And when you use it to pressure people, like, you know, without going into detail, obviously these teenagers and such who are transsexual and yeah, who, who, some of them who end up taking their own lives and just, yeah, and, and that's not, that's not always religion, but when it is religion, that's the kind of religion, that's, that's when I fight religion, no matter what, you know, anything that leads to that, I will fight. Now, I suppose that was about what I had thought of to say yes